It's Thursday, March 3rd, 2022. This is your life, ladies and gentlemen. There is no turning back now. A lot to talk about today. I wanna to get right into this video. We're watching uh, things continue to escalate in Eastern Europe and I was thinking today, as we're watching the banking system in Russia implode, we're watching their currency implode, uh, they've basically shut their banking system down. Uh, the ruble's lost over 30% of its value. Uh, people are in line trying to get money out of the bank. It's a complete disaster. And I truly believe that we're gonna see some kind of blowback, uh, some kind of ripple effect here, because there's no way you can shut down a country the size of Russia, shut their banking system down, uh, just slam their currency, and it not have some kind of effect across the globe. And countries are watching this, and I'm not gonna get political, I don't get political on this channel, but we're just talking about real life here. But, but countries are watching this, and they've watched the United States of America abuse the World Reserve currency, the U.S. dollar, abuse it, starting wars, controlling countries, really abusing its power. And I believe, let me know your opinion, let me know what you think, but I believe a lot of countries are watching this and they are looking for other alternatives to the dollar. And I believe we're going to force Russia and China to find an alternative to go around the dollar and I think most of the, of the world will follow. I think that many countries are so sick of, of the control, the abuse, the enslavement that we've put on the world uh, with the US dollar that they will run to any alternative. They will send dollars back to America and this is when big trouble will hit America. This is when America plunges into a third world because right now all we have is this world reserve status with the US dollar. And it's big, it's a lot of control. But people have lost respect for it. They don't want it, they want an alternative. And they know that we're printing money every day. Trillions and trillions and trillions and trillions of dollars is being printed. And the world is losing faith in the US dollar and they are losing faith in America. And America, uh, it's going to look a lot different when the world dumps the dollar because we've been weaponizing the dollar. The world knows it, and the dollar is going to continue to lose purchasing power. It may be the strongest currency in a sick bunch of currencies, but it's lost 97% of its purchasing power, and it is on borrowed time. And it really saddens me to say that, but we are going to lose. Uh, we're going to lose our standard of living here if something isn't done very, very quickly. The printing, we're, we're, again, here we go. Jerome Powell now still has not raised interest rates. Now it's going to probably be 25 basis points. So for years and years and years, why did they not raise rates? We should have raised rates 10 years ago and we didn't, and we're still not raising rates, and the Fed is still buying into these markets. This is going to destroy your standard of living. It's gonna destroy my standard of living. It's gonna destroy this country because the world reserve currency at some point will no longer be the US dollar. And I'm not saying that's gonna happen next week or next month, but the dollar is winding down. There's gonna be something newer and better out there. And unfortunately, we're gonna pay the ultimate price when that happens. Uh, also, I, I wanna talk about cryptos. Russia, been buying a lot of cryptos. And uh, Russia moved a lot of, uh, of money into cryptos. And what does this mean now? Is the US going to regulate and strangle cryptos knowing that Russia was trying to get around things, um, knowing that they couldn't use uh, dollars that they that they got cut off so they go into cryptos they go into Bitcoin they also mine a lot of cryptos over there in Russia so what is the US government going to do now are they going to regulate it are they going to cut it off are they going to strangle cryptos this will be very very interesting to see how this plays out uh, will crypto survive from what the US government is about to do 
to the to to the crypto market. And one more thing I want to say, banks. Uh, we keep hearing buy the dip. Uh, banks keep telling you buy the dip, meaning they want you to buy their losses. And so you've got to really be alert at what's going on there uh, with these dips, with the cryptos, with currencies, uh, what's the, the world events, banks, everything that's happening. There's so much happening that's going to affect you, affect your families. You need to be paying attention. Too many people watching basketball games and football games, they have no idea what's going on. This is going to affect you for the rest of your life. It's going to affect the, your kids, your grandkids. This is, this is the most important game you could ever be a part of because it's going to have life-altering effects on you and your family. Coindesk, Fed, uh, Fed Chairman Powell, war underscores need for crypto regulation. Uh, yesterday, Jerome Powell acknowledged that Russia could uh, use cryptos to bypass sanctions, and he wants to implement, implement more regulation. And so we saw Bitcoin, as I make this video, down $2,000 today. Uh, it's had a, uh, the last few days, it's bounced back up. Uh, but, but a lot of this, because Russians were buying up a lot of crypto, trying to get around um, this whole banking shutdown that has taken place. So we're going to see if the government, the U.S. government just stands by and allows uh, Russia to use cryptos or they're going to go after it and shut it down. We're going to see. CNBC, retailers start to warn of business impact from Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Many retailers uh, will not ship products to Russia. Many cannot ship uh, products to Russia because of sanctions. This is going to have a huge effect. Please go back to my video yesterday and the video the day before where uh, Sid and I went out and showed you massive retail carnage right here on the streets of California. Please go back and check out yesterday's video and the video the day before. Retailers have been absolutely hammered, annihilated, vaporized, decimated. They're dealing with record crime, shortages, supply disruptions, inflation, a labor shortage, and now this. They're not going to or will not be able to ship products uh, to the retail stores in Russia. And this is going to have more blowback, more effect on their bottom line as um, exports have been halted. The hedge today, China won't join Russia sanctions, banking regulator warns. Well, of course, Russia and China are going to try and find an alternative to the U.S. dollar. Rich Russians scramble to buy luxury goods as ruble plunges. People are finding out that currency is just paper. And they're unloading paper as fast as they can in Russia now. They're buying gold. They're buying diamonds. They're buying watches. They're buying handbags. They're buying exotic cars. They're buying anything they can get their hands on that isn't paper. There's never been a time, in my opinion, where it has been more important to own real things. This is the time uh, to get back to simplicity, right? Owning real things like gold, owning some silver, um, owning a, a little bit of land that maybe you can raise some animals on or grow on. And I know that most people can't do that. You may be sitting in a condo. You may live down at the beach. You might be renting an apartment. You might be living at your parents' house. Or maybe you have a farm. I don't know. But most people just can't go out and buy an acre of land and grow it. They got to go to work. They have obligations. I get it. But you can always go buy yourself an ounce of gold, a couple ounces of silver. Uh, you can always buy something real. You can put a little bit of cash away, even though uh, that's going to be much more risky. The inflation's eating it alive, but I still think you have to have some. I think the U.S. dollar will be one of the last fiat currencies to go down, so I think it's still important to have some of it right now, but what is more important is having real things like gold, like silver, some food, some water, security. If you can't protect this stuff, it's worthless. Somebody will just take it. Um, Having, having a skill set, knowing how to do something, investing in yourself, you, you being your own asset. These things are extremely important. But 
getting back to this article, they're buying gold, physical. They're buying physical diamonds, physical silver, handbags, art, anything they can get their hands on. And so think about when that day comes to America and so many people, oh, that'll never happen here. But how many countries has it already happened to in the last 20, 30, 40, 50 years? And we are the biggest debtor nation on planet Earth. Let's not forget that. We've printed more money than anybody. It's not even close. Our day is coming, ladies and gentlemen. And if you're not preparing for it, you're going to land up in the same situation. And right now, you don't have to wait in the line. You can go buy this stuff right now. Why not be safe? It's better to be safe than sorry. So comment down below. Let me know your thoughts on that. Interesting article coming from CNN today. These companies have the most to lose from Russia's attack on Ukraine. And I just jotted down a couple of these companies. I'm not going to go over all of them, but here's just a couple to give you an idea of what's happening. Coca-Cola HBC, the London listed company bottles Coke for much of Eastern Europe, employs 7,000 people in Russia, and it's one of its largest markets. BP, the largest foreign investor in Russia, has a 19.75% stake in the country's national oil company, Rosneft, also has stakes in several other oil and gas projects. Nestle, has six factories in Russia. Its 2020 sales in Russia were about $1.7 billion. How about Rolls-Royce? We've all heard of Rolls-Royce. Uh, Russia contributes 20% of its titanium uh, to Rolls-Royce so that they can make uh, engine parts and landing gear for some of the largest aircraft on planet Earth, Rolls-Royce. Exxon Mobil. The American giant has more than 1,000 employees in Russia, has massive stakes in oil and gas projects. 1,000 KFC restaurants, 847 McDonald's. How about Toyota? Russia makes Camrys and RAV4 vehicles right there in Russia. Uh, another article today from Forbes. These 15 stocks and 10 funds are overexposed to Russia and Ukraine. This was interesting. Global stocks with heavy exposure to Russia, and we look at the, the one month return, Renault down 29%, Coca-Cola down 32%, Volkswagen down 13%, BP down 11%, Pepsi Cola down 8%. This is billions of dollars, ladies and gentlemen. And this is just to name a few. When we look at US funds, iShares over the last month down 69%, T. Rowe Price, down 57.2%. Morgan Stanley down 22%. Schwab Fundamental down 4.5%. Invesco Emerging Markets down 20.6%, just to name a few. So very, very interesting. And this is why I think there's going to be some real serious fallout, some blowback here that's going to affect uh, not just Europe, but America. Uh, just think about how many banks, pensions, uh, other financial institutions that are invested in Russia. How about Citigroup? Ten, what is it, $10 billion that they have invested over in Russia? So very, very, very interesting. Um, I want to end with this. As, as we talk about what's happening and we're watching fiat, uh, another fiat currency crumble, uh, gold. And who has the gold? You, you, you know, we hear about America having eight tons of gold in Fort Knox, which hasn't been audited since 1953. So do we have eight tons? Do we have four tons? Do we have two tons? Do we have zero tons? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It has not been audited since 1953. Uh, also, European countries have asked for their gold back, Germany being one of them as they look at America as the largest debtor nation, printing tons of money, they're getting nervous, they're getting concerned, they want their gold back. America sent just a small portion of Germany's gold back while we still hold the main portion of their gold right here in our vaults here in America, at, at maybe Fort Knox, I'm not sure exactly where that gold is at, I'm assuming it, it, it may be at Fort Knox, I don't know, but why are we not sending them all of their gold back? Just a small portion, we have a majority of their gold still here. Other European nations want their gold back. We're not sending it back, why is that? And why do these European countries want their gold? I thought it was this old relic, this old barbarous relic that nobody wants. 
but it seems like central banks continue to buy it. It seems like major countries continue to buy it. it seems like billionaires continue to buy it. This old barbarous relic that they tell you is worthless and nobody wants, well, why don't we just give it back to them? We can make more room, maybe put some cash in those vaults. Um, but no, we're hanging on to it. For what reason? I don't know. But what about China? We, we hear that China has 5,000 tons of gold, 2,500 tons of gold. I've heard a lot that China has over 20,000 tons of gold. And I truly believe he who has the gold is going to win. They're going to have the seat, the main seat at the bargaining table when all this implodes because gold is wealth. Everything else is a promise, it's a debt, it's a Ponzi scheme, it's a piece of paper. Gold is real money, gold is wealth. And whoever has the most gold at the end is gonna have the main seat at the bargaining table for decades to come. Whoever has the most gold wins. Gold is real. Gold is not something made out of thin air. It's not made by a computer. Gold is God's money. Remember that. And as I leave you today, please, please, and I don't give financial advice, make sure that you have some gold put away or some silver. And you know, there's people out there saying, oh, gold's too expensive, gold's too, too expensive. And I continue to watch people on social media driving around in their 80 or $100,000 sand rails out here in the desert, their beautiful RVs, they're out at Lake Havasu and their $100,000, $300,000 boats, they're on uh, Facebook sipping a $9 latte or they're you know, sharing with all of us their $300 dinner at Mastro's and the big giant lobster tail or their weekend trip at Las Vegas or their latest vacation or their, their latest $400 pair of Nikes, their latest leased Mercedes or their latest leased BMW that they're paying eight, nine or $1,000 a month on to impress people they don't know, don't like or don't care about, um, these same people say they have no money. Um, so many people living beyond their means in this country. And we have so many people that feel wealthy because the price of their home went up. And so they're wealthy on paper, paper millionaires, we call them. But so many people feel rich and wealthy because the price of their home went up artificially. You know that and I know that. And these same people are borrowing money out of these homes so they can go buy a dune buggy, an RV, a boat, so they can take money out of their home and go and gamble it on the stock market. So they can buy into more Ponzi schemes and buy more crypto. This is gonna end bad, ladies and gentlemen. It's gonna end bad. But these same people don't have a couple thousand dollars to buy an ounce of gold. It's the same people they're gonna get wiped out. It's gonna be the same people that lose everything. I've had to make a lot of sacrifices. I've had to really change my life, get the debts paid off, drive a lesser car, live in a lesser area. Um, I made a lot of sacrifices. And I know a lot of you have done the same thing. And we did this because we knew that this reckoning was coming. And we are getting so close. It's knocking at the door now, ladies and gentlemen. These same people who laughed at you and I just a year ago, they're not laughing anymore, are they? And these will be the same people knocking at your door for help, knocking at your door to protect them, to feed their kids, to give them a couple dollars, to, to, to just any way you can help them. Same people that were laughing a year or two ago, and they're not laughing now. And it will be those same people that didn't have the money to buy an ounce of gold, didn't have any money to buy silver, but it's those same people that were showing you and I the new leased car, the vacation in Hawaii, the Las Vegas weekend, uh, the new shoes, the lobster tails, the $25 martini at Mastro's, all that. How big and beautiful their house was that they couldn't afford, but they felt rich because the price went up and, and, and so they were rich. Not understanding why the price went up. You understand what's happening. You know that the foundation is crumbling beneath this economy. Please go back and watch yesterday's video and the video the day before. This will reinforce with all of you what's really truly happening to this economy. And I think it will impact you and open your eyes if they're not already to what's happening and what's coming. God bless all of you. Thanks for watching. Share the video. Give it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe. I'll talk with all of you very, very soon.